If you just found out you're pregnant or you're currently pregnant and you're trying to pare down your skincare routine to know what's safe to use during pregnancy, this video is for you. In this video, I'm gonna talk about five things to make sure you cut out of your skincare routine during pregnancy to make sure you have the best, safest pregnancy possible. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Laura Soong, board certified dermatologist. Welcome to my channel where I talk about all things related to skincare and skin disorders. If you're new here, make sure you check out some other videos and give my channel a subscribe. So, pregnancy. Everybody's always really, really worried about what could happen to the baby, if it's growing well, and you just wanna minimize anything that could possibly cause any harm, and so this video is really all about that. So things in your skincare routine that you might be using that you need to cut out, we're gonna go through five things. So the first is retinol, or topical retinoids of any type. Now, we don't know for sure if these are safe in pregnancy, so my opinion is why risk it? You're gonna be glowing, your skin usually looks a lot more amazing when you're pregnant, so just put it aside. You don't need the anti-aging ingredients. You're gonna need those once the baby comes and you're sleep deprived and you got those big bags under your eyes because you never sleep anymore. So the retinoids of the retinol, why do we avoid them? Well, the data mainly comes from oral isotretinoin or oral retinoids, these pills are known to disrupt or cause problems like miscarriages or birth defects in a growing baby. And so that's why if you've ever heard of Accutane or you had friends on it, the pregnancy prevention requirements around it are extremely strict. You have to be on two forms of reliable contraception. You must not get pregnant while you're taking it. And that's because it can have very significant consequences to a growing baby if you were to become pregnant while taking it. So in comes topical retinoids or retinols. Because we know that the pill form can be very harmful, we recommend that you avoid all of the topical versions. There have been a few case reports in the literature where people were using topical retinoids during pregnancy and their baby ended up having some of the birth defects associated with if they were to be exposed to the pill form. So just cut that out of your routine. Make sure you read the labels really closely too because some anti-aging products might have a little bit of retinol or a little bit of um, a retinoic acid derivative in them and you wanna make sure that you're not using those. Number two is salicylic acid. Now this one's a little bit controversial but I would say I would avoid it just to be on the safe side. The main concern with salicylic acid in pregnancy is that salicylic acid and salicylates, kind of like aspirin, have been associated in some cases with something called salicylism. And so that can cause um, neurotoxicity or injury to the brain, deafness or ringing in the ears uh, to the baby when it's born. And so for that reason, we typically recommend that you avoid salicylic acid-based products. Yeah, sure, if you're using a little bit on like an acne cleansing pad or using a little bit in a sear, like a face wash or something, it's probably not the end of the world, but still, I recommend just cut it out. Third ingredient that I'm gonna talk about is something called hydroquinone. So this is a bleaching agent or a lightening agent. And it's a little bit tough for women in pregnancy because that's when you tend to get pigment problems like melasma. And so it's tempting to use things like hydroquinone to try to lighten those pigment alterations when you're pregnant. You know, a lot of people talk about the mask of pregnancy. A lot of people don't want that. Now, the thing with hydroquinone is we don't actually know if it's safe or not to be uh, used during pregnancy. And we do know that it tends to have higher absorption rates than other topical preparations. So the worry is that when you apply it topically, more than you would expect would get absorbed and that can cause uh, harmful effects potentially on the baby. Now, the fourth ingredient that we recommend avoiding is chemical sunscreens. And that's because a lot of these chemical sunscreens have ingredients in them that could potentially disrupt the endocrine or hormone axis. And so safest thing is to avoid using chemical sunscreens because we really don't know uh, the effect that these might have on a growing baby. So if you need a sunscreen during pregnancy, stick with a mineral sunscreen because those ones have not been associated with those same concerns. And the last ingredient we're gonna talk about today is topical minoxidil. So a lot of women are using topical minoxidil to reduce hair loss, improve hair growth. And it's a little bit scary if you've been using it to stop it cold turkey because some people notice increased shedding after that happens. But just remember that pregnancy, typically your hair gets better 
everything just grows better. Everything just looks better. So stopping it might not be uh, such a worrisome thing. And we recommend that you don't use it in pregnancy because it can be associated again with certain birth defects or changes to the baby. So in summary, those are five things to cut out of your skincare routine. That would be topical retinoids or retinols, your salicylic acid, hydroquinone, chemical sunscreens, and then uh, lastly, your topical minoxidil. Well, guys, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for part two, where I'm gonna talk about which things you can use in pregnancy and recommendations for different skincare concerns. I hope you enjoyed this content and uh, make sure you like, subscribe, leave me a comment down below. I'd be happy to answer it and we'll see you in the next one.